Hi everyone, my name is Jen Idson. I'm an artist and painter in Maryland. Today we're going to paint the cherry blossom trees set in Washington DC's Tidal Basin. While you're getting set up, feel free to get a snack or a drink to enjoy while you're painting and turn on your favorite music. We're going to get started. So I'm gonna grab my chalk and we're gonna draw our horizon line. So that's going to be, we're gonna go up about one hand width up, which is basically about the bottom third of your canvas. So I'm gonna make a mark about there and then I'm gonna make a mark on the other side. And since we're doing the cherry blossoms, you'll notice you can either do it straight across or you can do it a little bit curved because we know that the tidal basin is round. So I'm probably gonna give it just a little bit of a curve. So I'll go up a little bit in the middle for my markings on the left and right. And I'm just gonna draw a line like so. And that's all we're gonna do for now with the chalk. After the sky and the water dry, we'll be able to use the chalk again to sketch where we want to paint our Jefferson Memorial. So next I'm going to grab my brush and I'm going to pick up mostly white on my brush going to scoop maybe like two scoops like that for now and about that much of the cerulean blue which is the lighter blue and I'm just going to mix those together on my mixing plate and we're going to start with the sky so I'm going to paint we're going to paint from here up and just going to start putting that paint on the canvas that I mixed, the light blue. And if you mess up your line a little bit, that's okay. You can kind of fix it by holding your brush like so and just going really carefully like that. And that cleans it up. And then when we paint the water blue, then it'll meet. And you can also work on that border line right there more later. So don't worry too much about it. Keep going and adding blue to your canvas. So while that's wet, I'm going to dip into my white and I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit right on the horizon line and it should blend right in because it's wet paint on wet paint like that and then I'm going to go back to my mixture I'm going to get more white and add it to that plate and this time I'm going to add two dabs of that lighter blue and as we're going up, we're gonna make the sky just a little bit darker as we go up. So I'm going to mix that. It's a little bit darker. If you wanna make it more dark, then you can add more blue. So I'm gonna keep going. And I have a few streaks of that blue, but that's all right, because as I keep going over it, it will blend right in. So 
you want to be uh, make your painting a little different and be creative. You can add a few cloud wisps in the sky. The sky I'm painting will mostly be just a bright blue sky. It's a beautiful day. So that's the type of sky I'm going to paint. But it would be fine if you want to add in a little bit of uh, clouds, something like that. You can always add them in later after this dries, if you decide you want them. Okay. So I'm getting up to the top. I'm going to pick up just some straight blue, maybe a little bit on the edge of this blue that I mixed. Paint that up here. Darker, darker blue. But it still has a little bit of white mixed in. I'm going to blend it a little bit, this line. Our sky. I might add a little bit more white down here. Another option if you don't have an easel is just to put your canvas straight down on a table and just paint flat. That would be totally fine too. So if an easel is not something you can do right now, feel free to just paint flat on a table. to dry. So if you do paint thick, it will take a little bit longer to dry. I think I will add a little bit of a cloud up here. It's just kind of a wispy cloud. Kind of like that. And so next we're going to do the base the water. So it's fine to use this brush. We're just going to switch to the other blue and we're going to do some of that dark blue with some of the light blue and mix that. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing some of this lighter blue, some of the darker blue, and just a, a tiny bit of this bright red. So it's gonna look a little purpley, but we do want it to look different than the sky. So let's put some of that on. Okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of this light blue we made. Gonna make a 
water with that. So, gonna mix that some more. Gonna add a tiny, tiny dab of red in there. And I'm going to get some white, like so. So when we're later in the painting, we'll add some detail to the water to make it look kind of like water. Um, but right now we're just covering the canvas with that darker blue color. good for the water and the sky um, and another thing you can do while you have a color on your brush is go around the side of the painting if you want to have more of a finished look and you can just hang it right on a wall you don't necessarily have to frame it that way so that makes it really easy to enjoy right away so right now we're gonna, I'm gonna put my brush in the water so that this paint doesn't dry and ruin the brush. So um, I probably won't need that brush again. So after I rinse it out, I'm just gonna set it to the side on my paper towel. So this needs to dry before we can do the next step. So I'm gonna fan it with my plate for a few minutes maybe like five minutes to let it dry, five or 10 minutes. So if you did paint thicker, then uh, you probably need to wait for it to dry for about 10 minutes. And then you can pause the video and then restart it when you know it's dry. And then we'll start on the next step. So my sky is about dry. And what we're going to do next is sketch in our Jefferson Memorial or Washington Monument. So for that, the sky needs to be dry. <clears throat> I'm going to mark it uh, about four fingers over. I'm going to make a little mark and then about five wide fingers from that mark. I'm going to mark again and then maybe like two fingers. So going to be basically like um, a rectangle shape. And then another rectangle shape on the front. And then um, there's a dome over this side of it. So I'm gonna kind of go like so. And 
and there are some details that were add. The details will add when um, we're painting it. And there's going to be columns here coming down. And then more columns over here. So that's the rough kind of look of it. You can sketch it out with your chalk. And the next thing we're gonna do is use our smaller flat brush and cover it with white paint. So I'm actually gonna give myself a little more white. I'm gonna fill in this shape that we made. I'm gonna fill it in, and then we're gonna add some highlights to make it look like a uh, building. I'm just going to paint right on top of the sky this rectangle shape and it's okay if it's thin and it shows through the blue sky at first you can go over it again also if you decide you don't want a Jefferson Memorial or Washington Monument you can skip this part so that's totally up to you can be cherry blossoms anywhere, not just the DC cherry blossoms. Okay, filling in my dome. And it's okay if the chalk mixes in with your paint a little. It's very faint and not going to mess up your painting. Using the smaller brush gives you a little more control over where the paint is going. And It does take a little bit longer to fill in because it's a small brush, so that's okay. Now that I filled in the Jefferson Memorial, I'm going to just go over a couple of places where it's kind of thin and the sky is showing through. But like, don't forget that if you paint extra like heavy paint on it, it will take a long time to dry. But I'm just gonna keep trying to fill that in a little. So we're now to uh, make the columns and the dome. We're gonna use our purple and the dark blue, mix that together. So just a dab of this darker blue and a dab of our purple. And we're gonna mix that and we're going to use the thin edge. So not this way, but this way because it's very easy to use this for making lines because of the straight edge of this brush. So we're going to start out with the dome. And I'm gonna come down to about here and it, because it's rounded, we want to make the line go down just a little bit. And we're gonna do several 
curved lines like this. So the first one, now this is also something you can trace out with your chalk. So I'm going to do a couple of curved lines like this. I'm just kind of marking it with the edge of my brush. And I'm going to make this one just a little bit more flat. Okay. And since the white paint is still wet, it'll blend. Um, if the paint is drying for you, you can add a little bit of white in to make it a light purple for these lines that we're going to make. And since your sky is dry, you can rest your finger on it to help steady your hand. And I'm going to come across and blend it just a little bit like that so it's not so perfect because it just gives it more interest rather than exact lines, but that's just how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make this a little darker. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now and then we're going to work on the columns. So over here, we're going to go down about a quarter of an inch and that's going to be the top of the pediment. Like so. Then we're going to come down these columns. Basically, we're painting the shadow of the column. So whatever is still white will be coming forward as the column, if that makes sense. Try to make straight lines, but it is a little tricky. My lines are not that straight, so. You can also rest your arm on the table and your pinky finger on the canvas to steady using the edge of your brush. That helps a lot, steadying the hand. There are some stairs, so we can put in some stairs over here, about like so. Um, then let's do the columns across here. So I'm going to start this first one this is kind of the pediment area I'm going to move it over just a little because this will be so I'm going to start here not here so that it is more obvious that that is like a pediment add-on just take shape, right? Let's keep going. Putting our columns in. Do more. So I'm kind of going down and doing like a, a short brush stroke to start. 
And then I can go and kind of come down and clean those lines up if I want. Straight lines are hard, but do not worry. Once the whole painting comes together, this will be a small part of the painting and the highlight of the painting is going to be the cherry blossoms. So this will be kind of a background point of interest. So don't worry. of lines across here lightly I'm gonna mix a little white with it to make it a little lighter but I just just doing some kind of architectural details to make this kind of come together going sideways with my brush for that thin line, right? And I'm going to add a shadow. I'm going to add some more white. So it's a light, light, light purple. Really light, mostly white with a little purple in it. And I'm going to paint that right here so that it shows a shadow. under from underneath kind of like so and I'm gonna do a little bit of shadow over here just a touch here and there I'm gonna leave it like that for now so I don't get too carried away in this type of stuff. And if we wanna make little touch ups later, you can. So for now, I'm gonna leave the Jefferson Memorial. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in trees and cherry blossom trees and flowers in the distance. So it's just gonna be a line of them, a few bigger ones on either side of the Jefferson Memorial, and then just kind of a little um, some in the distance. So just for an example, we're just gonna kind of go like that and, that, and maybe a couple here. Let's start with making some green. So I'm gonna use my larger round brush, which is number seven, and I'm gonna mix Dark blue, let's go back to our mixing plate. Dark blue and a little bit of the yellow. And mix that into a green. 
Now this is gonna be a darker green. And we're just gonna put that along the top. So about an inch up, going to about a quarter of an inch. And we're gonna use a brush stroke that's kind of loose. And I'm just gonna kind of do that. It's a little bit, looks like it's floating in the air right now, but we're going to come back over it. And it's gonna go down to about there. So these are the darks, we're adding the darks. We're gonna add some lights. So since it's in the distance, we're going to add some white so it looks farther away. So into that mixture, I'm going to mix straight into it some white. And I'm going to go over the same areas again. I'm going to leave some of the dark showing. I'm going to fill it in some more. going, add some, keep going over here, a little more. I'm just kind of doing a dabbing, crisscross paint stroke motion, okay? I'm going to do another part of green with the light blue and the yellow. Mix that. A little more yellow this time. And I'm gonna add some white to that. This is gonna give me like kind of a warmer mint green because of the yellow. And I'm gonna keep going over. Just gonna add some of that in a few places. You can fill in a little like so for the bigger sections. We're basically just creating some interest and some layers color so it's not just straight green out of a bottle we have two different kinds of light green and then we had a dark green and we're gonna bring it up these are just some trees and a little bit more over here fill that in Also going to do some light yellow so just the yellow and the white a little more white two two paint brushes of the white and so now this will be the Sun highlight so just a little bit of that on the top of the trees as it's hitting the tree right so that's gonna be less these are highlight highlights. But also the same kind of brushstroke motion. Okay. And you can do a bigger section here, maybe break it up a little. So that it's not so regular and monotonous there. It's a little darker behind the monument, I guess. Okay. So now we're going to rinse that off. Rinse off that yellow. And we're going to put in our first cherry blossom trees in this painting. So what we're going to use is the bright red and some white. And I'm going to dry my brush off paper towel and I'm gonna get white I'm gonna mix on top of a dry part of the blue paint because it's dry now just a little bit of the red light pink and we're gonna keep doing that same section and I'm gonna do instead of just the crisscross kind of move, I'm gonna do more of like a 
a round stroke, a round curly, swirly kind of stroke just because it's flowers and it's cute that way, right? So these are trees farther away in the basin. And we're gonna fill in all that light blue area now because now we're done with the background and these are the trees in the front, the highlight of the whole painting. Okay. And they're out in the distance looking pretty in the breeze. Whenever I've gone to the cherry blossoms, it's always rather windy. Usually they peak, I think in March. So it's windy and cold most of the time when you go, but people go, it's very popular. I did not go this year. Some people went, I did not go. So if you see the green or the blue showing through, you can wait for it to dry a little bit and then paint some more of the light pink over it and that will help to cover that. okay for the green to show through so don't worry too much about it but you can go over it a little bit like so if you like I'm also going to add some highlights and some shadows so I'm just gonna pick up actual white white on the tip of my brush and I'm just gonna few highlights here and there. On the pink. Um, and then I'm going to pick up just some of the red we used. And I'm gonna you know, think about where the shadow might be under the trees. So I'm gonna kinda go under here. That looks a little bright to me, so I'm going to mix it with blue and make more of a purpley. It's a little too purple. So I use red and just a dab of the dark blue to make sort of a, hmm, I guess it's sort of a burgundy color. And I'm not putting it straight across in a line, I'm just going to dab it a little bit underneath like that and maybe in a few places bring it up.
So, you can also do just a darker pink. So, red with just a little bit of white. Just like a darker pink, basically. So, that's nice too. So wherever it looks like you need it, I'm just kind of putting it in different places. And I'm also going to add a little bit um, in front of the memorial here, just to give it, I think in real life there's different trees and places where things are located. but. This is our own painting and we're going to fix it up the way we want. So I'm putting a couple of trees here. You are welcome to be accurate. I am not, I'm not being accurate, but you can be accurate. You are free. And I'm gonna bring of that dark color in a little bit here and there and I'm gonna add a couple of trees too so I'm gonna go back to the green we had a minute ago and rinse that off I'm gonna do the light blue and yellow and white Get that, I'm gonna get more yellow. I'm gonna get that yellow, green again. More blue. Sort of a medium green color. And I'm just gonna put a little bit here. So that's our background and now the next thing we're going to do is the big cherry blossom branch that goes across all of this, which is going to be the most pretty part of our painting. So I think I'm going to use the big flat brush, not the big brush we used at the very beginning, but a larger flat brush. And we're going to mix a color for brown to do the branches and then we'll do the flowers. So we're, we're at least halfway done with this painting. So great. So we're going to mix brown for the branches. So we're gonna go back to our mixing plate, find a spot that's dry and we're going to use dark blue, red and yellow. how we're going to mix our brown. So this is my brown that I'm doing today. So I'm going to start a branch. Now this is something you can also do with your chalk. So if you want to use your chalk to draw where you want your branches, that's a great idea. I'm just going to paint it right on there. So I'm going to do one at the top. another branch coming over here. There's another branch coming from the top. That's going to fork off too. Kind of like so. It doesn't have to be a straight even line either because branches have a lot of variation in their size and shape and they have bumps on them and they have bark and so. But I wouldn't paint your branch like this. I would paint it like that. You get that thin line, but having variation in the line is perfect. 
Yeah, I want one to come, so it's about here. If you want your branches to look a little more brown, you can add more red and yellow to that mixture. I think I will do that in a moment. But we need to go back to our water. So we're going to add uh, some light blue to the water. So I'm going to use my dark blue again. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add white. And we're gonna mix that. So we're gonna go side to side across to do some variegated water. So I'm gonna start like that and then in a few places I'm going to add lighter blue. You can have some bigger sections of lighter blue. If you think about where the sun hits the water, that's a good place to think about adding some light colors. So while you're doing this, I, I will say use the wide and the thin direction of your brush just to give uh, it some variance while you're creating the water. So it's kind of like a not specific way you have to do it. Just add this lighter but similar blue over this. So be careful about how much white you add because it's really noticeable, okay? Because they're not painting on wet paint, it's not blending in. So you're just painting right on top of dry paint. So I'm gonna be really careful about where I put the white. I'm gonna kind of bring this over here. I'm gonna add a little bit lighter in the front that's closest to us. side to side brush strokes. Like so. And then I'm going to add some that are a little dark, a uh, little brighter white, right in front of the memorial. Uh, as a reflection in the water of the memorial. So this I'm gonna be a little more careful about. You can do 
a few with the wider brush stroke, and a few with the thin, and that gives it a nice reflection in the water, like so. It's kind of mimicking that shape, but not exactly. You can kind of vary a little. So that's going to be the reflection. Like so. Okay, so now we are ready to start our flowers on the branches. I'm gonna add one more branch that kind of goes over the water we just worked on. And that branch is just gonna come down, mainly this one, it's gonna come in, put that one back in, and then let's see, this one can just kind of come to that spot want it come down a little maybe this kind of like that okay so I think that works and give that make this a little wider here Too wide, just a little wider. I'm not going to touch those, okay. And if you want it a little more brown, you can add some red. And that will make it browner. But if you go over it again, just make sure you don't make it too thick. Just real light. Give it that lighter brown. Mine's still pretty dark. Okay. We're going to rinse this brush again and then we're going to do flower petals. So I had this other red out, the alizarin crimson, this darker sort of pinky red. And um, really pretty mixed with white to make the flowers. So I'm going to start out with sort of a medium pink color and as we mix more pink we can do some lighter pinks, some darker pinks, and then some white highlights and dark lights. So let's take a look at this again so you can see that's how what we're going to be doing. And we're going to use this wider brush and we're going to do brush strokes like that for the petals. Okay. Okay, so let's get white. Go back to my pink spot here and I'm gonna pick up some of the darker red, the Elodoran red crimson. I think that's a good medium pink to start with. And I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to jump right in. I'm going to start going along the branches, but I'm going to fill in all of this space as well. So let's give it, and I'm going to put my brush down and then I'm going to kind of twist my brush. And we can do some little ones. that. This is also not an accurate way to paint cherry blossom petals, but it has a really nice effect. And you're going to cover up other things that you painted, and that is okay. And we're just going to add pretty flowers 
all over these branches. The cherry blossoms are the prettiest part of this painting. And I'm gonna put some darker, the medium flowers up here also. I'm kind of doing three, three petals at a time, but sometimes two. for whatever I am gonna fix this petal that I didn't I was kind of fast when I did that so I'm gonna come back and do those and I'm gonna mix more white in so I can get a lighter pink and I'm gonna keep going filling in where I didn't put any petals yet and also lightening up some of the petals I did do in a few places like so. like you can put a little bit of that darker red on on your brush and darken up some of the places on these petals I'm gonna also add white so just however you want to do it going back and forth or as you have something on your brush, use it. And we're just gonna keep filling these in. If you look at a um, cherry blossom tree, the petals are sometimes clustered together. So even though we've now kind of put some petal, some uh, flowers on these branches, you can kind of like extend the cluster out away from the branch to create that fluffy kind of cherry blossom tree look. So I'm gonna start filling in that part a little bit now as well while I'm working through this painting. So in the comments, it's a little trivia question. What year were the cherry blossom trees planted in Washington, Washington, DC? And whoever has the right answer, I will contact you to give you a 10% coupon for my website. And I'm also interested just to know how many people have been to the cherry blossoms.
So it's also a design strategy to have flowers and branches going off the canvas. So, you know, that's why we have some of these branches going off the canvas. And I did, I'm gonna do this flower halfway on and I'm gonna do another flower over here like that too because it makes it more interesting. And if you think about like, if you took a photo of anything really, there's always something that goes off the side, to the side or off the frame of the picture. I'm just continuing to mix my pink and every time it's a slightly different shade and that is perfect because we want to have some varied colors and shades in our flowers. way to know if you're done or not is to, well, there's two ways. You can take a picture, like framing it, and then that helps me sometimes know where else I need to add a little more of something. And you can also just step back from your painting a few feet, look away from it, and then look at it. And sometimes you notice things that way. So that's a good way while you're finishing up your painting to try those two things, see what else you wanna do on your painting. If you have any questions, you can certainly put them in the comments and I will help you with however I can. So I think I'm going to leave it there for now, but if I'm looking at it later and I notice oh, 
then I can, I'll come back and fix it real quick. So if you wanna do something real fun, you can do some petals that are floating away in the breeze. Maybe like five. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna add about four or five floating petals that are, they've been blown off the branch. They're floating that way. So I'm just gonna do, now these I'm gonna do a little more carefully because there's a petal, there's one, kind of like that. Add a little white. So those are my petals blowing away in the breeze. The very last step, folks, is to take your small brush and find a dark color that you want to use on your palette and sign your painting. So I'm going to sign my Make sure you have enough paint on your brush, but not too much. And you're done. So I'm so glad you guys could join me. I'm even gonna put the year because what a year, right? 2020. So once you're done with your painting, it would be super awesome if you can take a picture of it and post it in the comments below. I would love to see what you have created and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and join my newsletter. All you have to do to join my newsletter is go to my website www.jenidsonart.com and the pop-up for the newsletter will be there so you can fill that out and that way you can find out when I'm exhibiting at art shows or uh, if I create another YouTube video to participate in or um, if I have a new blog post or if I have a sale on my website. So don't forget if you know the answer to the year when the cherry blossoms were planted in Washington DC put it in the comments and I will contact you to make sure you get a 10% discount on my website. Thanks for joining me. My name is Jen Idson, and I hope you have a great day.